Hello everyone, I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkin. Welcome to the Wolf Podcast, where we'll be talking about what is essentially the final episode of Persona 5 the Animation, Stars and Ours, which is the second OVA basically. With me today is... Hello everyone, I am Jimmy Kami's just DM.3000. Hey everyone, this is Florin G. Hey everyone, this is Mario Fanboy 15 aka that guy, um, that has a lot of notes written down for his OVA, exactly 28... <laughs> That's oh, yeah, actually no, that's it's... actually the amount of episodes we had throughout this, if you realize. Oh Holy shit! Oh wow! <laughs> good, good, good job, Zach. Good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, oh yeah, totally intentional. I swear. Totally yeah. intentional. <laughs> intentional. Yep. Yeah, you are genius. <laughs> oh man. Your anyway, knowledge has increased. <laughs> before we get things started, obviously, any kind of comparisons that we make to the game or animation are purely done for analytical reasons. And to give a quick synopsis on this episode, this takes place after the events of the first OVA, Dark Sun, where, for some reason, even though Shido has been, like, exposed of his crimes and otherwise, at least a change of heart, the public is still not, like, seeing things the way they should, to the point that the group realizes that the entire public is distorted. So they decide to go into mementos to try to change the entire public's cognition... And it all goes downhill from there. Yeah, because not only do they come across this thing called the Holy Grail, which they later learn is a god by the name of Yaldabaoth. 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 Um, They also end up finding out that the Igor that Joker or Ren was working with was in fact that false god in particular. So, yeah, it then leads to them having to fight this god in order for them to change the cognition of the world and yeah it just kind of goes from there like we'll probably go into more finer details as we talk about our thoughts and such but yeah I, especially, I, especially things about a uh, real igor or lavenza yeah and i'm gonna say mm-hmm. and, and, and i'm gonna say this right now this is not good this has a lot of flaws behind it not as many as dark sun i'll admit but cole has said this outside of this like you know in personal chats that's not saying much. Oh, yeah, I was the one that said that. <laughs> well, you nonetheless. But anyways, <laughs> Dean. Uh, but anyways, Dean, take us away. Uh, um, before Dean says anything, I'm just gonna say right here when we get to the stuff with Igor, I'm reserving that portion to rant about. All right, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh joy. Anyways, go ahead, Dean. You take us off first. Um. Yeah, about that comment about, like, not liking uh, this being not as bad as Dark Sun, I feel I'm on the camp that dislikes this a little bit more than Dark Sun. Ooh. I, I, I want to say that because it's like the, this is the finale, like the culmination of pretty much like everything that results from Persona 5, like, what is the the, the falling action? What's the climax of the story after we had that previous one? And... Holy shit, did they fall flat? Yeah, I do have to mm-hmm. agree. It's like I say, I, d- I say like this is not that much better than Dark Sun, or at least it's a little better than Dark Sun. But as you said, this is the finale, and an ending can make or break a series. We've seen this many times over in movies, games, and otherwise. Mass Effect Three, <laughs> <laughs> Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, yeah, that damn uh, shame about that one. <laughs> uh, good old Titan Joker. What? <laughs> yeah, um, and from that, for my perspective on the episode, like, I know that Dark Sun did have a lot of things riding on it, but there were a lot of things that were riding on this one, too, because this, it could be my my personal thoughts on, well, this segment of the game, because I think that Persona 5 actually has, like, one of my favorite segments out of all the Persona games, and they handled it uh, extremely poorly, or not as well-deserved, because you barely do the social link confidants in this game. Yeah. (laughs) Or at least in this Uh, anime, it barely does, because there's so many characters that get shown off in certain parts of the episode, but then again, when you really think about it, does Ren really have that kind of undying connection with these characters? Oh, and I hit my mic, Hi, sorry. Hi, anyway, What are you doing here? Fuck no. <laughs> can, I, I, can I get a fuck no? <laughs> fuck no. Hi, Shinya. Hi, EY. That's what I just said. 
Hi, Shinjiro. <laughs> Hi. Well, okay, well, at least Shinjiro. Hi, Chihaya. Uh, Hi, okay. Oya. Well, 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 at least Shinjiro's was maxed out in the sort anime. Of. I so. Sort of, but yeah, that's kind of my main issue. It's just like the culmination of everything together. Like when they try to actually combine everything to try and say, yeah, here's a solid conclusion for everyone. It really doesn't, just by the way the anime handles it, and their way of trying to scrape on by still doesn't work. No, it really doesn't. In fact, that was the biggest problem I had with this episode, but we could save that for comparisons and differences. Yeah, we can. Uh, otherwise, I just thought the the OVA was kind of dull. A lot of it was a lot of talking parts without much action to it. So, and even, yeah, I get it. It's like, this is the plot dumpy area where there's going to be like, oh yeah, here's this, here's the jail, here's Mementos Within, here's what Igor truly is, here's what Velvet Room means, here's random Igor. Um, but even still, I expected more out of the final friggin' boss. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's really my issue with it. At least with Dark Sun, I could reason, oh yeah, that fight scene was kind of cool. And it's like, at least they showed a lot more of the fight scenes to this one. And I could kind of get with it. But with these ones, I was just like, eh. This was, oh. this was worse. Here's the thing. The amount of fight scenes that they had in this OVA final episode was as bad as Dot Hack Sign. The thing about Dot Hack Sign, though, is that at least there, they make it very clear that it's more about the character study and character delving than it is the actual combat. But whenever there is combat in a Dot Hack Sign, they at least let it, like, you know, they let it play its part. Like, they let it, like, be what it needs to be. And if I could just, uh, 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 like, rant about this for a moment, I'm sure all of you have noticed, but this is, like, super jarring. The anime explicitly goes out of its way to show as little battling as possible. It really does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does. That's a comparison and differences we'll definitely get into because <laughs> that leads into something else. But anyways, Dean, you have anything else to add? Oh no! If I I'll, I'll go on for our, uh, for a while, and most of that is comparison. So I'm gonna let Cole take the helm. All right then, Cole. I look forward to when we get to comparisons and differences. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but whenever any of us just goes off on a rant, it's probably the most fun slash terrifying slash amazing thing ever. Because normally we're normally much calmer. <laughs> yeah it's like and there's the thing like a lot of people don't like a lot of people here's the thing guys we go into this trying to be positive we go into this hoping for the best and like waiting to see what these episodes give us we never go into an episode negative that's i think we're all just natural optimists here exactly yeah mm -hmm. it's that's the thing it's important to keep your expectations in check because if you go into something wanting to hate it you'll hate it but if you go into something with like way too high of an expectation you're setting yourself up for disappointment, and and this is like, and this is like I think for the first time like the second podcast in a row or just like wow this sucked, <laughs> <laughs> wow mm -hmm. that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, actually true because we never had two episodes back to back where we were all like yeah this isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> This fucking anime, I swear. <laughs> it's not like anyway. this episode, and that's the thing. It's not like this episode doesn't have good. But again, we'll get more into that. Cole, go yeah. ahead and take it away. Yep. Okay, yeah. so I'm just going to say this right here and now. Um, the first time I watched this episode, I believe I actually watched it with Zach, and we both mm -hmm. thought better than Dark Sun, but not by much. To get ready for this podcast, I watched the episode the day before, and I thought it was okay until I sat down and really thought about it. <laughs> if this OVA were, like, say, like a standalone episode, nothing really connected, I would be perfectly fine with it. But we, this is the last dungeon, the last boss... And as Dean said, the climax to this entire epic. Regardless of what good this OVA does, and I genuinely think the first six minutes were pretty strong. The fact that it flounders at the end, the fact that it basically 
checklists everything. The fact it skips over key details. The fact that during the fight, our heroes do two attacks that stalemate Yaldabaoth's attacks and then are suddenly exhausted. The fact that everything just feels like it sort of happens without payoff because it feels like very little effort has been gone into making any relationships with these confidants throughout the entire anime, with some exceptions, but not a lot, makes this an absolute disappointment. It really... And at the end, it just ends. It just ends! Yeah, yeah. It, it just it ends. It just ends! Yeah, the only, there's that's only... all, folks. Mm-hmm. That's all, folks. That's <laughs> it. Hey, guess what? We're going to go through here. We're going to go through here. Oh, look at this. Now look at this. Oh, wait, we have to include this. We have to include this. Welcome to my velvet room. Welcome to the vel- <laughs> I'm going to get to Igor later. <laughs> and then it's just over. And I'm left sitting, and I remember the first time I watched this, I was thinking, that's it? Yeah. That's it? Because mm-hmm. I, like, I'll say this right here and now. Regardless of co- any any opinions regarding Persona 4's OVA, when the anime actually finished episode 25, and for context, I did watch that one with my fiancé. He's never played the game. It felt like there was a proper conclusion. Yeah. With this, it feels like it just stops. And I do want to say one thing as well. As much as I hate the dungeon for the Memento's depths, skip just basic, basically cliff noting it like the anime did, is a massive disappointment. I hate the memento steps. I hate the color for the memento steps. It gives me eye strain, but that dungeon is the culmination of Persona 5's themes regarding bystander syndrome and every and complacency and everything about it. That dungeon, much as I hate it, deserves to be given the given heavy focus. And, it's and wow. it basically is just skipped. I, yeah. wow, 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 wow. This this feels like uh, oh, last time with uh, how we rant about this with Shiro's Palace as well. Because, like, here's the thing. Even if I don't, from a gameplay perspective, appreciate that dungeon, thematically it deserves to be written far better than it was. Yeah. 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 It's not like they need to do uh, that much more to the devs anyway, since, let's be honest, if I remember, the Mentalist's Death isn't that long to begin with. It's not. It's no, the no, shortest it's... dungeon in the game. Yeah, yeah pretty and all much. of this is like a couple of puzzles and a couple of, let's see and talk to some former folks that we took down. And especially considering you learn a lot through the Memento's Depths by, as you see in the anime, talking with the... Like, we see the shadows of previous palace owners. Kamashida, Matarame, Kanashiro. We even see Shido. And here's the mm-hmm. thing. Here's the thing. One, like, I'll get... You know, that's comparison. I'll wait till then. But the problem is, is that they spend so little time on the significance of these guys being here and then they just kind of cliff note it like being like these are all people that are choosing to be trapped here why tell us why give us a reason make me fucking care (laughs) yeah like the game didn't directly state anything actually it kind of did but it was also very overblown i think this is also when the translators started to get tired but (laughs) it is because it's the manifestation of the complacency in in Japanese society, rooted in Japanese society, arguably in even our society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's just like a a lot of it has been just pretty much glanced over, and I thought, all right, Shido's Palace, ah, yeah, you could skip some of that. Uh, You could have included these couple of things, but eh, no one really needed to see the uh, other parts of it. That's fine, and it's the longest dungeon in the game. You had to condense it. Mm -hmm. Why would Memento's deaths, of all (laughs) things, the culmination of the human unconscious and the fact that everyone is jailed and being like, oh yeah, I'm I'm okay here, yeah, I'll let the Holy Grail think for myself, I don't know, fuck life. But, no, yeah, we'll just skip over that. We, oh, hey, hello shadows, oh, hi, how's it going? It also makes the hopelessness of the situation in the anime feel so fake. Because, like, and I'm, and, I, 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 yeah, I'm going to stop here because it goes into comparisons. But the way that it's stru- the end game is structured in Persona 5 is absolutely integral to showing exactly how much inner strength the Phantom Thieves have. 
in this, it kind of just feels like they're doing it because because checklist. Check. Yeah, this check, is part of the check, end game. Check. Check. Oh, oh I, we I, need to make sure we fit this quota. We need to make sure we hit this quota. We need to make sure that we get Lavenza in here, and at while well, at the same time disregarding the key important quote that makes it obvious who the chess master is. Also, the sound effects and the music cues in this were to- so poorly handled. I am baffled. Oh, I'll get to that. <laughs> Uh, it's like, oh, 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 let's remember in the devs to include this quarantine cell. Oh, yeah, yeah, because that's important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Anyways, is there anything else you want to add, Cole? I hate the whole scene in the Velvet Room when Joker is trying to find his friends because it just feels like it's like, oh, everything's hopeless. Oh, wait, everything's fine. We can do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, we'll get into that in comparisons. There's a lot we'll be getting into in comparisons. There is a lot. There is a lot. Anyway, uh, sorry, go ahead. And I will stay right here. It's not just nitpicking. It's just because it's also it's so important. Pretty much. Anyways, um, if you're done, Cole, we can move on to Zach now. Zach! Okay. First thing I want to bring up, um, this, this OVA is a technical mess. Oh my god. It's like, uh, uh, like, <laughs> like, I know, I, I, I know it probably has the same budget as Dark Sun, but this somehow looks worse. It, um, it really does. I couldn't say that the CG actually looks half decent. A little laggy for set to Nile, but... Well, 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 again, I'm a little baffled on why, uh, like, most of the time, the, the civilians are, like, CG'd. Yeah, I noticed that. Weird. Oh, yeah. I noticed that. Instead <laughs> of just using, like, um the normal art background, they just use CG. But then again, this anime has used CG characters a bit, but not to this extremity. Yeah, I mean, you. That I would think that CG extremity. works... Uh, <laughs> CG works with, like, the boss folks and whatnot, but not for the regular folks. Mm-hmm. It, it, it kind of makes, makes me wonder, were they just running out of money or something? And on that note of animation, I could say this right now, the animation that they use for when each, um, when every single person in, like, every single one of Ren's friends and himself disappear, holy shit, that animation is just so generic and awful. Like... It's literally just a, hey, look at us disappear and then explode into blackness. Like, <laughs> I rewatched that scene in game because they have an in game cutscene of that using the in game engine. And it's so much better because it's just literally them fading from existence. It's not just Wait. a, like, you know, black explosion then fade. It's like, poof, gone. They just yeah, fade away. Because, you know, it's more effective that way. Yep. And 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 it's, it's making it like 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 the first piece of like uh, uh animation thing I want to bring up is uh, and Cole brought uh, brought this out to me when we were watching it together the way the way uh run his friends just just the way they just run to the memento steps when they first enter it that little area the running looks so awkward yeah it looks weird and like I said it's like and that's the problem it's like. I agree with you, Zach. There's a lot of animation problems in this. Not just because of the CG characters, but also just, like, the significance of certain scenes lose their impact because of the poor animation. And, uh, and boy, and boy, and boy, uh, there's a, uh, there isn't a great point than, um, than, 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 than when the real Igor first shows up, because he looks so weird. He does. His head just looks like it's pushed forward while the rest of the body is in normal position. It's like messing with a rig in freaking Flash or some shit. <laughs> and, or when and, I get my hands on a model in Blender. Oh, <laughs> oh man. And, and there's like some other technical issues as well. Like, 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 oh, 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 like, like when Lavenza first makes her appearance, for, uh, for, for some reason they play like the confidant music and it, you know uh when she's talking and then when fake igor's talking i'm just like this music doesn't fit well this situation no the it music doesn't. and sound effect cues in this and in this ova were just awful in a lot of areas oh oh yeah oh yeah cool. weren't you weren't you like very annoyed like when when uh that whole swooshy sound effect around fake igor that shouldn't be as loud as it is in that scene no it shouldn't <laughs> Oh, and, and, and probably my favorite part, when he disappears, it makes a, a really <laughs> weird sound effect noise. Something that you hear in, like, the 60s or something. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> is is there anything else you want to add on, Zach? Uh, yeah, I, I, yes. Uh, I don't know if I was the only one that that was no, noticed this, but but uh, but when Morgana was talking to like the Holy Grail and like turns around to talk to like to his like uh, teammates, the limp sinking doesn't match his mouth at all. Well, but, that's sometimes the case in anime because of the mouth flask, but I do think it did look a little bit weirder there. It did a little, but then again, Morgana's, like, character model has always been a bit weird with lip sync, if I'm being fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, I get that lip sync uh, ain't perfect, but but it looked really weird when when Morgana was talking in that scene. Well, like I said, Morgana's model looks weird in general, so I guess that's kind of, like, a bit of lead way, but that's not an excuse for some areas. Yeah. Um... Okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, what do I want to see, uh, bring up? Um, I guess to talk about something, I guess, Pasa, I like how they transition into the intro at the very least. <laughs> um, that intro is still the best intro I've seen in a long while. Yeah, and I really yeah. hope that with DVDs, they keep that as the main intro for all the episodes. Please? Like, seriously, oh. that is a great intro. Mm-hmm. It's just oh. too bad that the anime doesn't live up to it. <laughs> no. no. Especially these last two. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, especially. Oh, 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 speaking of, speaking of that scene where, uh, 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 where they're, like, disappearing, well, oh, uh, oh, so this is a little podcast, and uh, thankfully, thankfully I, only, I only noticed this one time in the OVA. Um, uh, right, uh, uh, right before Mako disappears, she's just like, where did we do wrong? It's like, ah, great English there. <laughs> Oh yeah, I saw, I remember that. Wow, that sucked. <laughs> Same thing with Yoshida, they, and they had one with they had one with Yoshida as well. Literally, him saying in English, "Take him down." <laughs> like uh, the, the English is weird. Um. Oh. 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 And also because it's a little podcast, we have a two for one deal. We get both an on butt shot and jiggle physics, <laughs> and Makoto butt shot as well. Oh my god! God damn it. I'm, <laughs> well, anyway, if Zach didn't bring it up, I would have eventually. Yeah. Anyways, I do. Um, are you done? Are you done, Zach? Because I do have a few things to say before we move on to comparisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last thing I wanted to bring up. Okay, I'm gonna say this right now. When it comes to stars and ours, as Dean said, this is meant to be the conclusion of Persona Five: The Animation. Yes, we know there is one more OVA supposedly coming. Well, two more OVA supposedly coming, but. They're not meant to be like direct, conclu- like you know, continuations or otherwise. They're meant to be sort of side stories and such. So, for all intents and purposes, this is the last episode. This is meant to be the culmination of everything and the culmination of what we learned in Dark Sun. I mean, yeah. technically, Valentine's Day does happen near the end, but still, that's like the ca- that's like the calm after the hurricane. Oh, well, I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, what we should say is. Um, the two OVAs don't take place like after uh, this OVA. Yeah, because yeah, right... I don't know when the the other one is supposed to be. Yeah, because remember, like the OV... this pretty much ends with Ren heading back to his hometown and such. So, but yep. anyways, and, we'll... and Yusuke wanted to jump out. <laughs> well, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did that in the game too. Even open yeah. the even open the fucking car door. Like Yusuke, you're in a moving vehicle on the highway. What the hell are you thinking? And you then don't they... care. And then he did it in all... the game too. I know. That's <laughs> why I said, "What the hell are you thinking?" Like, come on, you're smarter than this. <laughs> and then, and then they all got into a crash and died. At the end. Stop. <laughs> anyway, is that the anime ending? <laughs> I don't know, but anyways, get, get back... <laughs> I was looking for an answer. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, getting back on topic, um, this is meant to be the culmination of everything, and I agree with Dean. It was handled so sloppily, both with the mementos devs, the characters disappearing, them regaining their resolve, fighting a god, and all this other stuff, especially Ren's arrest. Ren's arrest pisses me off the most because we learn nothing. We see nothing about the arrest. We see nothing in terms of how everyone gets affected by Ren having to turn himself in just to make a case against Shido. And we don't even learn that much about what happens to Shido and otherwise after Ren is supposedly let out of Juvie. 
Yeah, we don't even know how he was let out of juvie. We were just told, oh yeah, your friends bailed you out. Exactly, that they found someone from that, and it's, uh, that from the incident that was able to talk about your story. But here's the problem: we still never learn about Red's fucking backstory. Yeah, yeah we yeah, haven't. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, um, no, no worries. Um, I will edit the audio on that one. But still, the fact that we don't learn about Ren's backstory, so the significance of them finding someone who was able to prove Ren's innocence from a year ago means fucking nothing. You, you know, you know the sad part is about 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 the whole uh, about the whole. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. She, uh, yeah, she lied to Shido. I'm just like, you know. This would have been a perfect opportunity to. I know it's a comparison. Yeah, you know, this would have been a perfect opportunity to to have shown uh to have shown Oya oh, yeah, since that's what she did in the game. Yeah, but, but they, didn't uh, anyone. they didn't do anyone. It's just like we nope. only saw their backs. That was it. Yeah. yeah, and the worst part is, oh man, we don't even get. That's the problem. We, just, like, that's the big thing is that because we don't learn Ren's backstory, we don't get the significance of this situation. There is the big problem with this OVA. If I can explain this OVA in one easy term, is hollow. It tries, <laughs> like it tries to build. It tries to capitalize on the stuff that it's supposedly built up, but because it built up so little, the conclusion feels nothing more than a hollow victory. Yeah, that's how I felt without that whole thing because they tried to do like all the oh yeah, here's all the key scenes in the game that was just like or all the key figures in the game and we're going to show them off and just how much that they encouraged the Phantom Thieves in the end. Too bad we learned jack shit about all of them and hell, some of them we did not really get any sort of confidant story at all. Hi Shinya. Yeah. Hi Hi, EY. EY. Hi Oya. Hi Chihaya. A uh, friendly reminder that Ohio's oh, Ohio? Ohio. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, fusion. Ohio. Okay. Um, let me fix that. Friendly reminder that at the end of Oya's confidant in the game, um, you learn that uh, her whole entire issue is in fact tied and connected to Shido. Yeah, yeah, and if yeah, and if they were to allow that, if they were to allow Ren to learn this, especially like here's the thing, this is why I said Dark Sun and Stars and Ours should not have been OVAs. They should have been second seasons. Because then they could have explored EY's story because we do learn that EY's friend does have connections to a lot of political figures with his with this kind of shit. We learn that Oya also knows about like, you know, because her story is connected to Shido. There's so many ways you could have connected these confidants to other characters. Hell, even with Sojiro, because in the game, Sojiro does know who Shido is. Even personally knew him. Yep. Mm -hmm. I so, would argue probably there's only one person in the whole damn thing. Oh, no, two people, actually, that probably actually kind of deserve them actually cheering on the Phantom Thieves. Yeah, Mishima, which makes the most sense, obviously. Yeah. Sojiro, mm -hmm. because he knows that uh, Ren is a, is a phantom thief along with Futaba. Um, and I, I would argue Akechi. Not only Akechi, <laughs> but... Oh, my God, I can't believe I forgot the doctor's name. It's been so long. Ta oh, Takami. Takami, thank yeah. you. Makes sense but at for... no point did we ever think she actually found out about the him, him being a phantom thief. It's like yeah. she says, oh, go get him, guinea pig. And it's like, when did you find out? Exactly. Oh, how did you lose? And I'm like, okay, how the hell do you know? How the hell did anyone know who they are? Here's the oh, thing. Oh, oh, I, oh. Wouldn't have, I wouldn't have mind that they don't do a scene where they knew they were that he was a phantom thief. But I would have been more okay with this if they interacted with them more. Mm -hmm. yeah, if they did, and they kind of got that hint, but they just, you know, they just kept hush hush and just be like, okay, you, you go on your merry way and be thieves and all that, risk your life and take down some crappy adults. That's fine by me. And just and, kept it under wraps because you know you're supposed to do something like that. And, and, spe and speaking of these characters, uh, when you guys when you guys are talking about them, and so as I go, she is just like, oh, I, I know you guys can overcome any fate. I'm just like, when did you come to this revel uh, uh, you know, this revelation? Because the whole point of your story was that fate can be overturned. Oh, and, it was all in the cards. And it's the, all written. And the worst part. <laughs> and the worst part is. At the end of the episode during the credits, Ren goes to every single one of these people that were there when this all went down. 
the problem is, and again, why I call this entire thing hollow, is because Ren has little to no interaction with these people. He has no real connection to these people that the anime has shown. The reason why, and this is actually leading me into comparisons and differences, the reason why this works way more in the game compared to the anime is because in the game, you spend your time with these people. You learn their backstory. You learn who they are. You learn why they became outcasts of society or why they are the way they are. And through helping these people not only come to terms with who they are, but making them feel better about themselves in a variety of different ways or giving them the resolve to never stop fighting... That's when they figure out you're a phantom thief. That's when they decide to stand by you. And that's when they come to your aid when you're fighting Yao DeBuff. Exactly. And it feels extra good when you, uh, when you, when you max them out. But that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, imagine a one, imagine a 100% run, social link run of Persona 5. Of Persona 5. That's what the anime was trying to make it out like, oh, Ren had an impact on all these people. How? Show us. Because you didn't show us shit with half of these characters. Yeah, and I could probably say, or like, I could probably make like some kind of similar argument with Persona 4 and how like he only interacted with like a couple of the characters like at least once. And that's how he establishes the support. But at least he helped them out and interacted with them. And at least you could get like a good idea of their personalities and such. And but the worst thing about it is that compared to Persona Four, which is all about you um, unity and all that, Persona Five, you go all the way with all these characters to get the best end <laughs> for like the best impact. It's about and camaraderie. It's more about camaraderie mm -hmm. and f like you know following a similar goal. Yeah, and the way that they put a lot of emphasis on that in Persona 5 makes it that the way they were trying to do that, it felt like they just missed the point. That's yeah. the, And that's the biggest problem I have with this. This is why I say we shouldn't have gone two OVAs. This should have been a second season for us to explore more stories, for us to explore Oya, Ey, Chih Chihaya, Hifumi, Shinya. Yoshida. Especially Yoshida, because he's a political official. He would probably have the most to talk about in terms of this field. I mean, he's a disgraced politician who literally earned the name No Good Torah. And the an and it's like and the anime, we only get like literally one interaction between him and Ren. And yet, at the very end of the anime, they have us believe that Ren had this deep connection with all of them, thanking them and otherwise. And I'm just like. Fuck you, anime. You do not deserve this. In fact, you didn't earn this. Mm -mm. No, I did not. No. Man, it's been a while since I've seen this and this angrily passionate. I changed my vote. This is worse than Dark Sun. Honestly, <laughs> I'm, will I'm willing to say the same thing. I really am, because... Ah, join my side. <laughs> think thinking about it more deeply, Dark Sun had its problems, but it only... But it that's the thing. It failed to capitalize on one of the most important details, Ren's backstory. This, however, fails to capitalize on everything that you need to build up on to beat a god. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll mm. say this, I was more entertained by Stars and Hours than Dark Sun, but when you think of it in the context of what we have, Dar Dar Stars and Hours is definitely worse. Yeah, if this were, like, a regular episode, I probably wouldn't be waiting it as much, but because they tried and completely missed the point of a lot of elements of the ending and just pretty much just wanted to, oh, yeah, here's a conclusion, without actually feeling like a conclusion. Mm-hmm then yeah, I, I probably would be less hard on it. But now, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, because in the game, when you're saying goodbye to your confidants, they literally thank you for helping them sort their lives out, even giving you something to remember them by while you when you head back home. And, and, and it just gives you that extra good feeling. I'm just like, I'm glad I maxed these guys out. Exactly. Go ahead, go ahead. Saying goodbye to everyone in a Persona game in general, is one of the most sweet, heartwarming, and sad moments that I have ever experienced in a video game. Because it feels like in the end you've accomplished so much, that you've really gotten to know these people. 
And this anime just completely wrecks it. Exactly, because think about it. It's not like you only spend a couple of weeks with these people in the game. You spend a full year not just with your friends, but other people that you learn to grow attached to. And mm -hmm. you're and you're basically saying goodbye to all this, like in Persona Four, like the main character Yunar Kami goes back home to the in the city, and in Persona Five, Ren goes back home to where he's from. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and and I know I said this once before, uh, once before in the whole podcast in general. But the thing about the about the confidants, uh, you know, about the comments of Persona Five is that. Uh, unlike the four and three ones, uh, the, these guys actually play more of an important role when you max them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they do, and which is cause something they completely gloss over in the freaking anime. Which if somebody yeah. if some if somebody wants to cover this, go ahead. Let's talk about this. Okay. Uh. All, all right. So you know how that moment in where Ren supposedly like says, "Oh yeah, I'll give myself up for the good of my friends and everyone." Uh, yeah. After that, uh, he just pretty much gets sent to juvie, sees the vote room one more time. And uh, three months later, I'm. I, 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 you know, what I'm actually mad about. I'm actually mad they skipped over the the entire Christmas event. Well, okay. I wish they would have had something for that one. In all honesty, but eh, I kind of understand why because they probably aren't dedicated or really want to like dedicate themselves to a girl or something like that. I, I don't even know how the, they don't have to. They don't have. They to. don't I have to. I they, they have a. They have a normal one, don't they? I, I didn't get they that. They do. It's spending Christmas with Sojuro and Futaba. I actually, yeah. Why I, don't they just show that? Um. Let mm -hmm. me say. Let me say this right now. I actually didn't even get that. No lie. I actually didn't even get that. My, my character went straight to Juvie with Sai. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, if you don't. That's possible. You have to max up both Sojuro and Futaba to get that one. I didn't uh -oh. max out Futaba. I only maxed out Sojuro. Wait, does that mean that Joker didn't max out anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. So uh -oh. he had the worst run in the game. Yeah, so I just went straight to Juvie with Sai. So the very next morning when they came around to, like, you know, do the party, I wasn't, th I was already gone. Like, I was pretty much already gone for the entire night. Yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, even excusing, like, you know, Christmas, like, being putting that aside, there's the moment where the fan, the remaining Phantom Thieves, like, pretty much say, oh, man, we lost Joker. What'd he do? He turned himself in. Ah, oh, shit. Let's get him out of jail. All right, cool. And uh, that's what they spent the rest of the two months for. And they also spent, they also spent the rest of the two months being like, oh, yeah, did he also, was he also good friends with these uh, other people? Let's try and get in contact with them and see if they can help us out. And not to mention, there was also them wondering what Morgana would be saying if he was there to see them like that. Yeah, and that's the thing that kind of takes me a little bit out of it, because the problem that the anime kind of goes into, especially noticeably in the ending, is that they really, really try to make Ren very important for some reason. Like, this is our main character, yeah, but do they really elaborate so much on both, like, A, his personality, motivations, or whatnot? Not really. Not really. And that's the problem. It's like, they put so much emphasis on him that they kind of forget, like, he's not the only one that's in this. He's got his other friends to help him out, and when they just skip out on, like, oh yeah, we're gonna help him like get out of the jail, that's the moment where the leader, like, pretty much lets his friends, like, pretty much try and rescue him. Like, help, they, uh, they take charge and actually try and help them out. That's what helps to get you out of prison. And honestly, oh, God. <laughs> and honestly, the thing is, is that each care, every confidant that you max out, including your friends, end up helping you in a variety of different ways. I can only talk about the ones I remember and so otherwise, but good example kawakami she ends up getting the whole school board to speak positive on ren's behalf that he never did anything wrong in the school even saying like if we like you know if if, if students can't rely on us who can they rely on yeah and Yoshida rallies the goddamn government to get to your side oh yeah Moya goes oh, yeah. to your town yeah oh yeah goes to your town literally looking up information about the original event EY speaks to people that he knows from the Yakuza to literally make sure you're protected. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the anime just skips over that. Well, I haven't brought up this joke in a while, but I'm going to hear completely serious. Akira Kurosu is better than Renama Mia. <laughs> oh. Well, okay, Akira actually did go to the effort to actually max out his social links. Ren is apparently a piss-poor boy. Uh, but I believe... Oh, 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 oh. Attic trash. 
Oh, 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 Attic oh, oh. trash. Oh, 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 another important one that uh, I don't listen to it, but but I vaguely remember this. That was a little important. Um, uh, he fully speaks on your behalf by going on TV. And not yeah, the not, and not, you and well. Takami, you go ahead, Cole. I know you're about to say it. Takami explicitly states she's going to use your name as the contributor to her research. Then of course you have literally. Then of course you have Mishima who does a a petition signing out in Shibuya, like literally putting himself out in a situation that he would never otherwise be in just to help you out. It yeah. goes about it goes about as well as he expected. Well, but yeah. the thought it's the thought that counts. Yeah, and, too. Too. and the fact and the fact that he's trying and the fact that he's trying so hard because Mishima is literally the greatest example of someone who is glued to their computer. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And here he is out in the open begging for signatures. Yeah, uh, rather than just relying on the internet. Mm-hmm. The, 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 uh, the only characters that I can think of that didn't really help that much was uh, Chihayas and Shinyas. Well, then again, but it, even it, then, they you know, tried. They're tra- yeah. They they're... tried. It's rallying the people as well. Which exactly. is kind yeah. of what Mishima was doing too. Yeah, because yeah, because like, yeah, Chihaya was trying to get the people that were a part of the same company she was to speak on his behalf, and Shinya was basically trying to get all the younger people to start speaking on Ren's behalf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, young people are pretty loud and obnoxious and passionate, especially passionate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, but that's what I'm trying to say, like. The anime doesn't do anything to show this. And so, literally, we just skip ahead to, hey, Ren is out of... And it doesn't even look like a juvenile hall that he came out of. It looks like a regular old fucking building. <laughs> oh, yeah, to it looks fair, like a school. Might, yeah, it's, but to be fair, that might just be how Juvie looks in Japan. Maybe? Uh, oh, it looks like a school? <laughs> oh, wow. That yeah, exactly. And it even, has, like, <laughs> it even has a massive open gate like that. Like, I know the gate probably closes, but that does not look like a juvenile hall. Um, and another thing, like, literally when Sojiro says, oh, your friends ended up helping you out, so make sure to thank them, you don't show us! <laughs> like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. It's, 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 it's just a lot of talking. It's like, oh, I'm telling you about this, but not showing you it. Yeah, part- it would have pissed me off more if, say, like, all the things that all your friends did is just Sojiro just pretty much said, oh, yeah, Takumi uh, voiced, your, voiced you in uh, her speech or something. There's and I'm just in- like, really? <laughs> <laughs> There's one important scene. There, well, two scenes I need to bring up. First and foremost, how Ren gets out of Juvie, they never explicitly say besides that. In the game, we literally have a scene where um, where Sai is talking with Ren in Juvie, letting him know that the case against Shido has been made thanks to a critical witness being... Hmm? Sorry, I thought I heard something. But basically, but thanks to a critical witness coming forward... The case against Shido has been like you know has made progress. Mm-hmm. Oh God, that's the worst of all. I felt. Oh yeah, we don't get a conclusion to that case. Yeah, um, we don't get a conclusion to uh, to how Shido is doing. Oh, for all we know, um, he could be just really delaying his uh, imprisonment. But we don't even get a conclusion how Sai ends up. No, yeah. not at all. You know, the person you've been confiding your your heart out in order to say, hey, get with us. Yep. The second thing, um, and of course, we also learn that thing. What the, the heck? heck? Yeah, you hear that, right? The fan of oh, it's probably the door. <laughs> no, it's probably, <laughs> no, sorry about that. Forgive me, but like I said, we also learned that literally from, uh, we literally also learned that thanks to Ren's testimony that the case is also making progress, but we also learned from Psy that Literally, Ren is free to go now, and his case has been dropped. Mm-hmm. Like we, yeah. learn, like we learn all of this in this one dialogue. Another one, unfortunately, is it's the biggest problem I still have with this anime. Sojiro's personality. I hate the way they did Sojiro throughout the entirety of this anime. It, he really is. Oh yeah. He really doesn't feel mm-hmm. like because here's the thing, in the anime, he's just very matter of a fact. But in the game, when he comes to pick you up. He, you know, jokingly, is sarcastically like, I didn't want to be here, but, you know, Futaba wouldn't stop bothering me. <laughs> yeah, which is probably just him hiding. Is just like, oh, he was the first to go, totally. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, he was just be- he was being that guy. Like, he was kind of treating Red like crap, but he was doing it lovingly. 
Yeah, he he's the cool uncle, pretty much. That's exactly what I identify Sojiro as. But uh, not in this anime, uh, he's just some guy that just I have to live with. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I will say this uh, when, it, uh, when it comes to the anime. Um, I did laugh at this, where it's just like, oh, Morgana. It's like, no, I'm not a ghost. I still have all four paws. Pause, and he has that smug look. Yeah, I will <laughs> give it that. Like, that scene did make me laugh. I mean, mm-hmm. here's the thing. That's the that's a bit of a difference between the game and the animation, where because Morgana appears when they start talking about him during like when they decide to ho- to throw a party for Ren coming back in the game. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, mm-hmm. Morgana just comes back with Ren. And it's like, what am I, a chopped liver? And then it just takes them over to all the register. And they're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I think I kind of like more than how they handled in the game. <laughs> yeah, because it like took them a second. It's almost like they double taked. Like, wait, what? It's like, wait, you're both back? What? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but feel a little bitter though that we didn't actually see them when they went into the cafe. Yeah, yeah. that sucked. Yeah. I did not like that. Uh, am I if I bring up another comparison or are you done, Nelson? No, do bring up more. We still got time. Wait, okay. we're in the in comparison section now? Yeah, we've been yeah, in the we've comparison been. section. Yeah, I didn't before... realize that we had a direct compare and we just segued into it. I thought Nelson was still giving his review. <laughs> no, I said transit and that transitioned us into the comparisons, talking about how hollow the the fucking ending is. Ball. Well, all right. Well, I can just bring this up. Um, I, I, I brought this to brought this up to Nelson. You know, pretty much everyone else uh, off air. But I'm just like, uh, when I watch this the first time, I'm just like, oh, did I can't you just pull off a Shinjiro from the end of Persona Three? I actually kind of like that. I, I, yeah, yeah, me too. I, yeah, I, I like that as well. Yeah. I, I like because that. Shinjiro was probably the only other social link that he actually maxed out. Shinjiro? Yeah. It's like, whatever, a catchy. Yeah, <laughs> I actually like that purely because, like, you know, even, like, because, again, they made a deal, and it's not like a catchy outright, like, outright despised Ren. He was just jealous of him. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love the fact that, that even after a catchy is dead, the, the, <laughs> the animation finds some way to incorporate him. Yeah, literally even say, like, it's not checkmate yet, even still having the king. Which I'm yeah. just like, you know, fair enough. I'll give you that one, anime. Good job. You yeah, managed um, to make it go full circle somehow. <laughs> anything with a catchy, this anime did very well, except for the Dark Sun OVA. Except That's for Dark Sun, but at least, but they did good here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's one thing I do like. <sighs> Though that does lead us back to problems. Okay. There okay, is okay. one more thing I will admit, a small minor one that I thought was a nice little extra touch. The game never actually explicitly states whether uh, what's gonna, w- about whether jo- uh, Joker Ren whatever the fuck his name is Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> the oh, game shit. never explicitly states whether Steve fuck it Akira is going to actually come back to the city or not. Whereas in the anime, the re- the anime Ren explicitly states that he wants to talk to his parents about it. Gotta yeah. Talk things out. Yeah, that's definitely cool because, well, then again, it makes sense because at this point, Ren is a third year. He's basically one year off from being an adult. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I wouldn't be surprised. He goes back to this. Uh, he goes back to where he is, talks with his folks, and probably the school that he's being transferred back to, and comes back. Yeah. I mean, so I doubt Sojiro would have any issue with having him stick around for another year. Yeah. I don't think so, honestly. Well, no. game Sojuro, obviously, but I'm not too sure about anime Sojuro. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah, exactly. That's just that in itself. I... Okay, 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 uh, uh, okay, Cole. Um, I know there's one comparison you want to bring up, and it has to do with the whole Velvet Room sequence. Go ahead. I actually wanted to talk about that, too. Okay, right. so, um... Bring it on. So... I have to admit, I was hesitant on whether or not this could be considered a nitpick or not. But there's a lot of weird little skips in dialogue that they omit from the Velvet Room that raised a lot of yellow and red flags for me. What is the most... So I'm going to just say this as a question. What is the most important line either Caroline or Justine says that hints... That makes that we we were hinted at it throughout the game throughout the game, but 
but it, but at the, what is the one line that Caroline or Justine says to Igor that makes it obvious to us, the audience, that something is very wrong? Uh, 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 Master, have you truly forsaken humanity? Thank you, Zach. That was in the game, wasn't it? It yeah, was in the game. Was. It's not in the anime. Yeah, that's true. And the worst part is the anime doesn't even do any sort of work in terms of building up that Caroline and Justine have memories that they might not even remember or if they think that Igor's like, you know, like what he's doing lines up with what he would normally do. Like, I'll say this right here and now. I've played pers the Persona games for at least this point well over 11 years. Four was my first, then I played three, and I've even played one. And one thing that I always, and so I've been hesitant, I didn't want to, I was hesitant about bringing this up or not, simply because of my obvious bias. I have a relationship, we all have a relationship with Igor that's much deeper than just what, than what someone who would be watching the anime would be, would have. But the thing of the matter is, is that this isn't, I'm sorry, I think I lost, completely lost focus. But the moment in the game, the moment that that is stated if you even if Persona Five was just your first game, like it was Zach's first game, you immediately yep. realize that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when the Velvet Room uh, attendees or assistants are questioning Igor's methodology, that's when you have to realize something's not right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yep. es especially when we consider the other game, uh, the other games. Uh, uh, you know, especially when you consider the other games, because it's so like, wait, he never acts like this. Yeah, and remember, even in the earlier games, the Velvet Room assistants have always followed Igor's orders faithfully and without question. Exactly. And Igor, I will admit this, he's creepy. <laughs> he looks creepy. That he long sounds nose. creepy. <laughs> that long he, nose. But he has the greatest hope for humanity outside of Philemon from Persona 1 and 2. And just to bring this up right now, f f like, Igor's just meant to be, like, same. this is kind of the thing that Philemon became. Philemon's an observer of the world around us. The blue butterfly is meant to be a representation of Philemon in a lot of ways. Uh, the blue butterfly is even the same point in Persona 4. Yep. Exa yep. Exactly. Whereas Igor, he took up the role of Philemon, which was... Basically, like, guiding someone along the path to keep the world in balance. The games that are consistently played in Personas 3, 4, and 5, whether they're fight whether it's dealing with Nyx, reaching out to the truth, God fucking damn it, that song is now stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, the openly, <laughs> or the openly admitted game that they even admit is a game in Persona 5. These games are played because... Igor truly believes in the best for humanity. Even in when he's even, and I'll say this: Persona Five threw us all for a loop because of the voice change in English and in yeah. Japanese. It's always been believed that it was originally believed that it was because may he rest in peace. The original Japanese VA passed away, and they didn't gonna get the English one back for whatever reason. I still remember when Persona Five first came out. We were just like, man, I don't like Igor's new voice. But mm -hmm. then, yeah. but then you so find we out all got twist. used to it, and then it threw us for a loop. <laughs> exactly, and it's one of the most brilliant. Like I'll admit this, I got spoiled on it ahead of time, but even I thought that it was brilliant when we fi when I finally got to the reveal. Mm -hmm. The point of the matter is, though, is that there's a lot of cues leading up to this that show that Igor is not what he seems in both, and in and they're in the game. They're with Caroline and Justine starting to question stuff. And the first, they are, if I may, real quick, Cole. And the no, first, because I'm still going. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, they're with Caroline and Justine, noticing, notice, having those questions in their social link that is never actually explored in the anime. Holy shit, they don't explore it in the anime all that no. much. No, Not they really all. don't. Nope, Not nope. at all. Nah. It's with when. Igor suddenly starts to take a slightly wickeder turn than normal, and Caroline and Justine notice, but they pay no mind. And then at the execution, that is when Caroline and Justine ask the question, Master, have you truly forsaken humanity? Or is this even right? Or is this even right? Exactly. Uh, 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 I do not think in the OVA they actually questioned 
anything that Igor told them. They looked shocked, but then they were like, oh, okay. And then they were like, wait. Wait, because of the vision of Lavenza. Yeah. And and, Mm -hmm. and the next thing is also weird is that is that, is, that, is that they skipped the forced battle you have to do with them? Dude, they that skipped too. a lot. They've skipped a lot of battles in the OVA. They skipped the battle yeah. against the Holy Grail. They skipped the battle with Caroline and Justine, and they barely even show a battle against Yabba Dabba Dubalov. Yeah, <laughs> and they didn't even show the Archangels. They didn't show. I'm okay with them skipping the Archangels because by that point I was hit, getting exhausted. That, yeah. That's fair, but that at least hinted that we're at least the side of... This is basically, we're the side of chaos going against the side of law. But... Yeah, in a way... That makes sense, hey, get your bullshit out of my persona. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, but it ma- <laughs> yeah, well, it makes sense that, like Morgana said, when a god plays dirty, it's up to a demon lord to put him in his place. Never mind the fandom thieves, I'm putting my money on that demon lord. <laughs> okay, fuck that line in particular, I hate that line. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna be honest. I loved that line for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, <laughs> and here's the thing: when it comes to Igor in particular, the very first sign that you know something that you, the very first sign you should realize something is up, is literally the very moment he begins to talk. Not because of his voice, but because of what he says. Welcome to my velvet room. Yeah, welcome to my to- velvet room. Yeah, and compare that to the Igor that we all know and the one that appears at the end of the game. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Oh, and there's one other line that they decided to omit <laughs> that technically that technically is actually just me nitpicking, but at the same time I still need to say it. <laughs> you truly were a marvelous guest. Oh yeah, they omitted that one too. Alright, fuck this anime. <laughs> yeah, they did, unfortunately. Because- because Igor says that at the end of every Persona game. Yeah, because he's not biased. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, is that by omitting some of these little weird things, there's no reason to believe that Yaldabaoth isn't still just screwing with our heads, other than just Lavenza's word. And Lavenza literally just tried to kill us, to kill us when she was split in half. Yeah. yeah. Then, of course, going further into that with the problems with not only Igor, but the Velvet Room itself... As Cole brought up, literally when Ren goes to each and every one of his friends, locked up in the Velvet Room. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, they change this from the game because, like, in the game, Ren has like a kind of a lengthy conversation with them that makes them uh, have to resolve once again. But in the anime, it's just like we're all going to bring them together as one room and say, like, "Oh, they all have the same re- resolve at the same time." <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't mind that they did that, have them all in the same room, but still not really fully resolved, as you saw with them not being in their clothes. But the problem I have with that is that instead of Ren convincing them to not give up or to bring their resolve back to them, they just kind of reach that point on their own. Which kind of omits the fact that Ren's the trickster who gives them that rebellious spirit. Exactly. Like, wouldn't it have been better to just see them in this broken state, not sure about themselves, and then Ren literally just bringing them back to reality, making them really realize what they're saying is stupid, that they know that they're better than this, and that they were, and the people that they're being right now is no different compared to the people that they were when Ren first met them. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. That was the point of the conversation in the game, and that's what should have happened in the animation. To make them realize that they are just they're reverting back to their old selves, and if that is really what they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the that's what I mean. It's like the more and more you delve into this, the more and more problems it just has. And don't even get me started on the final battle with Yal the Buff, where they don't even go into the seven deadly sins. Only yeah. lost. <laughs> They only go through lust, and uh, I think he pulls he pulls out only the gun and the sword to block one attack. But that's it. We don't even learn about the like vanity, greed, or otherwise. Like for 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 a final battle, the, uh, like, like 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 I know we brought up all oh, the battles in Persona and animation isn't that great to begin with. But man, this is really underwhelming. When Persona, Persona Four had better <laughs> fight scenes, Persona yeah, Four had well, a better yeah. Persona Four had a better final boss. Yeah, well, it was well, more enjoyable. Oh my god, it's... Uh, blah, 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 blah. 
Y'all the boo 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 Yeah, exactly. Y'all the boo 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 boo. Man, 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 man. The Persona animations in general have uh, bad luck with like when it comes to, like end game. Oh yeah, but at least I could compliment. I'm now looking back, I can at least compliment Persona 4 for at least having like the effort to try and you know make something out of the out of the ending to make things a little bit more conclusive. Still disappointing, but hey, they did something good. They tried at the very least, and the state. Here's the thing. If there's one thing Persona 5, the animation, is missing that Persona 4, the animation, and I dare say Persona 3's movies had, is one simple word. Stakes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it made, mm -hmm. like, you know, this, like they made sure how high the stakes were. And not only did they make it clear how high the stakes were, they made it clear how, they may also showed how hard these people were in, like, you know, how hard these people were willing to fight, but also how tough this battle was going to be. Especially in Persona 4's, uh, sorry, Persona 3's final movie, where, like, I can say this, Makoto Yuki fights Nyx alone, whereas everyone else is fighting two separate battles to buy him time to fight Nyx. And we see all three fights happening at different points. Like, we know what's at stake here, the end of the world. Hey and guys, I apologize for profusely, but I need to take care of something very quick. Oh god, no. I'm s I'm really sorry. No problem, I guess we'll take it up from here, but this is what I'm talking about. It's like, even Persona 4's animation had this idea of stakes, where if they lost, look what was gonna happen. I never felt the stakes in Persona 5. They made it, they, you know, they made it clear what the stakes were, but it feels like there's no impact behind them. I, I think it's because they didn't really show much of what's happening, like around in the world around them. And the, seriously, like the way they went, they turned around and basically are just like, "Oh yeah, fan of these, yeah, we remember, yeah, yeah, yeah," and all and, that. Uh, I'm just like, eh. It also has to do with the fact that there's very little build up to it. Exactly. There, cause, yeah. Yeah, because remember, as the fan of thieves are climbing up to where Yalda Buff is. The people are beginning to remember who the Phantom Thieves are, but then other people are beginning to also, well, not only remember who the Phantom Thieves are, but also realize what the hell's going on around them and even begin to disappear. Because, you know, social awareness, that's kind of what the point is. <laughs> exactly. To the point like, yeah, it's getting worse and worse down there. So it's like the Phantom Thieves are like, we got to hurry this up. Yeah, and that was the weirdest, one of the weirder things that I had with, oh, is that cool? Hi. Oh, welcome oh, back. Hi. There's a giant bug in my office. Well, oh. then, that's something to have in the podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that happened to me outside the podcast. <laughs> I guess, but yeah, yeah. like I said, you don't move. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I said, that's the biggest problem with Persona Five. Like, yeah, this final OVA and this final episode, like, just it can be summed up in in so many words. Hollow. Lack of stakes, and most importantly, unfulfilling. Yep. Yeah. That is the uh, best way to describe this um, final episode. Yep. I, 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 oh, man. I, I, I'm so looking forward to when the, when the deities come out with those two extra OVAs. They're going anyway. to be way better than this. Anyways. Honestly, I'm at this point, I'm just about done. Yeah, Can we the... just get Persona 5 on Switch? Please, please. Uh, there's or, hey, can we figure out who that red-headed girl is? Yes, please. he needs to know about her, about his new waifu. Yes, exactly. I will bring up one more comparison before we move on, which is when we run into the shadows of previous palace owners in the Memento's Depths. In the game, they would actually explain more and more why they were in those cages, or even the people would explain this. Hell, we even learned from Shido better explained in there because they take the time to actually talk with these people which is what leads them getting caught and having to run again but we learn a lot of information the whole reason the palace were made in the first place were because they were bred from people not just from distorted desires but apparently people who escaped yaldabuff's prison people who actually broke free of this whole idea of accepting like you know yaldabuff as their central god and thinking that they can be their own man or their own person. Yaldabaoth basically just used the Phantom Thieves to bring everyone else back in line. Exactly, mm -hmm. and once everyone was back, and once everyone was back in line, there was no reason for Yal. There was no reason for the thieves to exist anymore. Mm-hmm. 
so we were used. It's, it's it's so it's so weird in the game. It's just uh, just like oh, uh, Shido's talking to them while they're running away. I'm just like, how are you guys hearing Shido when you just keep running away? And the sad part is, as well, they also asked the question, like, wait a minute, if all the previous palace owners are here, wouldn't that mean Okumura is here? But no, Okumura died. Remember, his shadow died mm -hmm. and his real life person died. So that was also explained in the um, in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they glossed over that. They didn't I, even bring it up. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I can't believe I'm I can't believe I'm saying this, but um. But 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 Haru got more chipped here than the game. Oh yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, yeah. Yeah. Got, I don't know she, how that was possible, but they, they succeeded. Yeah, she, yeah. Got, she got horribly gypped. How is it that one of the worst characters, like one of the characters that they they fucked up the worst, which was Ryuji in the game, got the best development in the anime, and then Haru just gets like gypped even worse. Like they how? don't. They they don't even start her confidant. That's how bad it was. I don't oh remember God, them. You're anymore. right. Yeah, Dude, I don't she... even remember them actually like going, you know, planting and shit. <laughs> at did... least the, at least the other party members got their, uh, and, you know, they did their comments. The other party members, but not her. It. She just feels like she's there, unfortunately, and that's sad. Yeah, yeah. worse and than it... Naoto. Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> let's get away from comparisons and differences because we're already an hour and five minutes. New, yeah, I don't well, care. Will, will this be a new <laughs> record of this being our longest for some fight animation podcast? Probably, probably. Yeah. But we had a lot to though. talk about. That's the thing. I, I the reason why I say that is that we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And this is a lot to to take in. Also, we never get to fight. We never get the uh, last thing. We never get to fight the whole. They never fight the Holy Grail to learn that the reason why the Grail is getting its power is because the people that are inside the prison are giving him the power to basically exist in the first place. I just realized something going back to that. Do you oh. remember in the game you fight the Holy Grail not once, you fight him twice, and it's still a futile effort. Yeah. The fact that we don't even fight him at, and that, the fact we don't even fight him at all is painful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. okay, yeah. Haru and Makoto being being hypnotized by it briefly, nice touch. Doesn't change the fact that we doesn't change the fact that the game gave us a hope spot, crushed it, and just made us feel like crap. And then it was like, okay, let's go back and do it again. <laughs> Yeah, 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 cause, yeah, because because at that point, so I was be like, oh, what? It's like, yay, it's like, yay, do we beat it? Do we beat it? Yeah, yeah, we, we saved the day. It's just like, oh. No. Oh. It also means we didn't get any rivers in the desert. Nope. No. No, no, no we, only, we only got that with the Shido fight. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. sad because literally, like, you even come up with a new strategy to fight the, uh, the Chalice, and even after that, it's not enough. We just end up being kicked out of the memento steps and then disappear from existence. It does make me wonder, at least in the context of the anime, so, uh, y'all the buff, why did you even need to, like, transform in the first place? You were doing it for you all the first time. Honestly, <laughs> I'm starting like to wonder what the point was of even including the grail if we didn't, if they didn't even do anything with it. Just no, I, I, wait, check... I know, I know the answer. It's because it was in the game. Yeah, checkbox. Uh, <laughs> holy grail. Check. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, done with comparisons. Let's move on to final thought. Let's move on to most importantly: is this a good episode for fans or casual watchers? So, oh, it'll be fun. Dean, take us away. Oh, I think it's the best episode ever. It surpasses Ooh. like all the Persona movies and the animes and all that. And I want to burn my copy of Persona Five because the the anime is all I ever need. <laughs> oh, I can tell Yao the Buff has corrupted him. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> Everything is perfect. Remember to be nice and obey the rules. <laughs> Better than the game itself, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's a royal? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Seriously. Uh, wait. Uh, wait. What? <laughs> okay. I'm summoning Jack the Ripper to hit all three of y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From Jack Brothers? <laughs> You're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Any <laughs> Anyways, go ahead, dude. Uh, it, um, okay. I mean, I was the one who originally said that I still didn't like this one, and I thought it was worse than Dark Sun. And I still stand by it. This episode kind of blew. 
Um, I think if I were to, I, I brought this up earlier, but I think if I were to have watched this episode like on its own, like if this was on its own and this wasn't the finale, like its own episode and something, or we have something to continue on from afterward, then it would have been all right, I guess, or just eh, bad, but not as bad. But because it has the additional weight of being the finale, one, you can't avoid it. Two, it's supposed to culminate everything together. And three, it's the goddamn ending. You're supposed to do something grandiose or something with it. I had my problems with Persona 4's anime ending, but uh, hell, it conf- concluded everything. It concluded things just fine and worked itself just nicely. Well, nicely. <laughs> I, I'll still hold on to that OVA. I'll still hold on to that. But it, it's just, I, I just think that a lot of their decisions that they made for this one just really didn't really work out. Like, both objectively, like, I don't know how, I don't think that folks who, like, haven't played the games would, like, react to something like this. Like, this is supposed to be the finale for something that they've, well, gotten into, or hopefully at up to this point maybe <laughs> um it, unless they just decided you know what i want the game now um but yeah it, it just didn't really like resolve itself quite nicely and i brought up the fight scenes the fact that there weren't much of those or really much of the character study as much only I, one. I don't, only one yeah and it, it doesn't really like go with what the strengths of the persona 5 anime had and and then for folks who have experienced the game, you're just going to start asking questions like, why didn't they have this? Why didn't we get most of the confidants? Why didn't they show this off? And why didn't they show this off? Going to make so many questions and so many things have been left, well, either unanswered or unfulfilled with this anime, which would sadly lead into a very disappointing conclusion. Anyways, now I'm going back to yell the bots control, so um, everything is fine. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what the fuck's a fan of thief? Dean. <laughs> Dean. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Cole, you're up. Oh, for the casual and hardcore thing, or right, casual and fans thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> The truth of the matter is, is that casual watchers, people who've only been watching the anime, are going to have to see the OVA. That's the reality of it. But mm-hmm. I will be completely honest and state, what's your preferred color? Blue, red, or green? <laughs> <sighs> I, I just... Because it feels like... The, I, because it just feels like everything is so unfulfilled, I... I'm sure that there are people who are going to like this, but I would not be surprised if a lot of people end up getting hit with the ending fatigue, the ending backlash. And I think part of that isn't just because of the fact that it feels like the anime missed out on so much stuff, but also the fact that it took three months for this to come out. Yeah, three people months. People are going to be tired of waiting. Uh, 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 it's just like, what were you guys doing in those three months? D- Dillard, oh my gosh, imagine if it took like three months just to like animate all this. Ugh. Well, I'm uh. pretty sure that would be impossible unless they were working like 120 hours a week, but with the way the anime industry is in Japan like that, right now I wouldn't be surprised. But it's like... Ugh. I feel bad for whoever watches this. I really do. Like, I will say this to any casual viewers who are watching. If you did like this, I am so happy for you. I really am. Because it's like we've, like I said during Dark Sun, we wanted to like this. We wanted to like this anime way more than we actually do. But knowing what we do know about the anime, about the game, and then going here... It just doesn't feel like in the end a lot of if it just doesn't feel like in the end it, anything was really fulfilled. There's going to be some people who are going to be like, "Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I don't know who that is." And what some the, people, who the fuck is Lavenza? And honestly, there's yeah, and yeah, who the fuck? What the fuck is a Lavenza? Though to be fair, some of us were also probably thinking that when we were playing the game too. <laughs> some people are going to be like, "Wait, but the bad guy looks exactly like." 
the good guy? How do I, how, how can I trust, can I really trust the other big nosed man? Oh, this weird little chibi girl, ch- chibi Lolita girl is here saying, yes, we can. So why not? Why, and as why, for why, fans, why? don't even bother. Seriously, just don't even bother. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 cool. And I imagine people are going to be like, wait, why is the Velvet Room still like disappearing? It always does that. I, I I know I know it always does that, but um, but I imagine a casual watcher be like, wait, why is it suddenly disappearing? I will be honest and give the casual watcher the benefit on the doubt for that because I think they won't really fucking care because we already know from the anime itself the Velvet Room technically exists in his subconscious. Exactly, okay, okay. and it's meant to take shape to it's meant to take shape depending on the the visitor's heart. Yeah, admittedly, if you're just watching the Persona Five anime. That last part's not going to matter too much. He did his thing. It's gone. Poof. Bye-bye. Anyway, okay. Zach, you're up. I'm not done. Oh, wait. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Cole. Yeah. I thought you he was. Christ. I thought you was. You jerk. Shut up. <laughs> I I don't even remember what I was saying. Fans. So. You're talking fans. about fans. Thank fans. you. As for fans of this, you have the game. Because... <laughs> you have the game. The conclusion you have the game. is good. Because it's like... <laughs> Because it, here's what you're because in the anime, in the anime at least you'll skip the memento deaths. Thematic gameplay wise, it's crap. But thematically though, it is the one of the most important dungeons in the game. You'll miss all the thematic important stuff from the memento deaths is barely here. The fight against the Holy Grail is not here. The, bull, the all of the stuff regarding the importance of Igor is kind of not here. Morgana's thing is here, but by this point I was getting more tired of Morgana anyway. I'm just going to admit that. But the stakes just don't feel like... The, the stakes are here, but they feel like they feel like they're raw instead of well done. So it's like, just, wa- just play the game or watch it on YouTube at this point if you're a fan. Because right here you're basically ba- going to get like a half-hearted... A half-hearted bullshit response. This, anim- this an- game deserved a better anime. Yep. Yep. And it's going to get a better follow up, hopefully. Here's hoping. 110% Uh, I agree. Anyways, uh, you done, Cole? I am done. Because I I think at this point, I'm just fucking tired. I'm tired of Persona 5. I'm tired of how poorly handled it's being in its supplementary material. And while I am looking forward to the Royal, I can quite honestly say that. All of this bullshit has just left me exhausted. I can understand that. It's, it, mm-hmm. it reminds me of my love for 3. I love Persona 3 way more than I do Persona 4. To both Cole and Dean tell me I'm weird for that. But You are. You are. The, sad part is, you. the sad part is Persona 3 doesn't have a good representation either. The movies are okay at best to very middle of the road at worst. And let's face it, the only other time that Persona 3 ever appeared was in Q and referenced in Trinity Soul, which we do not talk about Trinity Soul, at least not yet. And then, then, we, have, then we have Dancing Moonlight, which a uh, dub dancing game. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. It feels like 5 is starting to get a bit of a weird treatment, and I really hope they they turn this around before they also end up treating 5 as badly as they did 3. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like I think four managed to get kind of scot free with um with this much of it because I know that a lot of folks complain about like why does four get all the attention? But you got to admit the things that four actually managed to get sounds like what the golden and maybe a couple of side games here and there. They did fine for what it did. Yeah, the, the, the anime, like... the original anime adaptation for Persona Four is fine if you sit back and just enjoy it for what it is. The arena games are very good. The dancing game is weird, but a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Persona 4, at the very least, for all its spinoffs, has quality behind those spinoffs. The, 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 the only thing that's weird with all this Persona 4 stuff is, oh, everything is canon. <laughs> yeah, everything is canon, but you know what? <laughs> One, unlike something like, say, what, Kingdom Hearts, you don't need... Uh, yeah. to know what happened in between that kind of stuff. It's just supplementary material. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
Because it's like, in the end, none of it actually matters to the core series of the games. Like, you don't need to play any of the arena or dancing games of Persona 4 to understand what's going on in Persona 5. I guess it helps that, uh, I guess it helps that of all the Persona games, Persona 4 has, like, the happiest of happiest endings. Yeah, but anyways... Well, that doesn't really matter too much. It's just that with 5, it's... It feels like for how special this game is, and let's be honest, it is an absolutely special game. It feels like it's just being treated with so much disrespect. Pretty yeah. much. But anyways, I'm done now. Yeah, let's continue this because we're about to be now. We're thirty. Good. Um, <laughs> Zach, uh, take uh, Zach. Your thoughts for um, fans and casual. Okay, well, 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 to bring up what, uh, to bring up what uh, Cole said, uh, uh, you know, you guys said earlier, it's like, oh, you know, I, you know, I help uh, the, uh, they do this right later. I'm just like, don't worry, they'll do this later with Persona 5, the royal animation. Or they're yeah, going to or they're gonna fuck it up even <laughs> worse with, like they did with Persona 4, the golden animation. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, if it's supposed to be with the female protagonist, I'll fucking laugh if she does a much better job than Ren. Hey, you know what? You know what? The trailer. The trailer that, that she was involved in, she was commenting on the anime because she thinks that she can do better. Yeah, <laughs> I like I said, if they, if they somehow do worse with a Persona 5 The Royal anime, holy fucking shit. Oh, that, that, ooh, that'd be rant and a half. Oh, that, good lord. Yeah, because we're going to have to cover that. <laughs> watch watch out. Watch, watch out. Only, watch like, with the golden animation, that only be, like, 12 episodes. Yeah, it makes sense, but anyways. Um, okay. Uh, casual fans, um, like, uh, 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 like Cole said, uh, unfortunately, you're going to, you know, you're going to have to watch this since, like, the, the finale and what have you, but, but, and we do enjoy it, good for you. But if you have either a PS3 or a PS4, please pick up Persona 5 because we like it's so it's so much better than this finale. Hey, if you don't have time, because let's face it, real life is ter- is extremely terrible at times. Just watch it in segments on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I can I can recommend Shenpai as someone to watch. She does, she actually has a pretty fun playthrough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guarantee you'll be a much more be more entertained more entertaining than the finale. Especially with a Ryuji know. love. Oh, God, the Ryuji off. Stay up there, <laughs> goddammit! What the fuck? Time to the bug. <laughs> just commenting uh, on the bug. No, she's commenting to Yaldabuff, telling him to stay away. Yeah, while we're at it, Yaldabuff, stay up there too. We don't want to deal with your bullshit right now. <laughs> um, uh, Go um, ahead, uh, Zach. Uh, 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 as for fans, <laughs> no, fuck no. <laughs> you have the game. You, you, I think yeah, I think they would rather just play it again than rewatch this finale. Oh yeah. Or watch it in general. Um, that being said, like yeah, yeah, that's that, that's all I have to say. Just 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 play the game. Don't and, don't watch this. And and and, and, was just, and, and we say constantly throughout the podcast, this is one of the most inconsistent animes I've ever seen. Oh, it ain't that the truth. Anyways, they, they, they at least remain consistent with the other Persona animes for having a really uh, subpar conclusion, so there you go. <laughs> Please don't. Anyways, <laughs> I'm up now, so when it comes to casual watchers, unfortunately, like Cole and Zach has said, this is unfortunately one of those situations where if you're a casual watcher, you do have to watch this episode if you're following only the anime. Like, if... <laughs> Oh, yeah, you did too. Sorry, Dean. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you never played the game, have no intention of playing the game for whatever reason, and you're watching this, then, yeah, you have to watch this episode, regardless of its flaws. But I'd urge you, if you're into, if you, if you like Persona 5 through its anime in any kind of capacity, play the game. Because it's going to give you a far better experience, at least in some areas, because the game does fall short in terms of Akechi's character, Ryuji, and some other things. I, I, I imagine some people would be like, man, why is Ryuji a lot more angrier here? <laughs> exactly, but I'd still say, like, the anime really only has a few merits behind it. Like, so if you are interested in playing Persona 5 in any kind of capacity, pick up a PS3 or a PS4. Granted, PS3 has longer load times, but you could pick one of those up for, like, 100 bucks nowadays and get a copy for 30 It'll be way better than dealing with this crap. As for... Yep fans of persona 5 that is a very big fucking no i'm sorry and, 
Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if it wasn't for the podcast, like, if it wasn't for the podcast in any kind of capacity, I don't think I would have talked about this episode in any sort of way. That's I me. probably wouldn't have even watched the anime, to be honest. That's true. It's like I probably would have watched it out of curiosity, but I probably would have dropped it at several points. That's the thing. It's like, yes, we went into this wanting to be positive, but the enemy just kept it kept feeling like the enemy was spitting in the face of us like fans of Persona 5. We're not asking for a one for one retelling of the game. But what we want is for Persona 5 to be adapted into a different form of media and you know what? Put its own spin on things. Didn't they say that they were going to have like drastic changes in the story and otherwise? And the only drastic changes that they had within the entirety of this anime was making Ryuji's character a lot more acceptable, making the split off with Morgana and the rest of the group along with Haru a lot more easier to deal with, and improving Akechi's character, making him actually a sympathetic kind of character that you would want to see saved, not just see him die. I can't, still can't believe they actually made Akechi likable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's the thing. We, we, like, we say this throughout the podcast. It's just like, whenever the anime does its own thing, you know, and doesn't do a one-for-one one of the game, it's really good. <laughs> Exactly, and when it does do it one for one, it usually has some differences to help keep it like be like unique from the game. Look at when they showed off Yusuke's confidant. It was very much one for one, except with the inclusion of Akechi. When they added Akechi into that into the story with a background story, it added a lot more. Mm-hmm. It made it, it prevented it from just being a one for one retelling and turned it into something original. That's what the anime should have done. I'm not asking for a one-for-one -one retelling, and I don't think any fan of Persona 5 would ask for that for an adaptation. It would technically be impossible. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What we're asking is for them to take the material that they're given, look at what they have in front of them, and then try to turn this into something that makes sense for the, for the form of entertainment that they're doing and add their own spin to it. So that way... People can have people can have different experiences. You've got the anime experience. You've got the game experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And plus, plus the other problem with uh, uh, what's doing. Oh, you know, you know, you know, because we don't want this to be a one for one uh, of the game. Because in that case, we're like, well, why would I even watch the anime in the first place? Exactly. Exactly. It's like, look at mm -hmm. books and movies. If you were to read, like, I, I'm going to bring up the best thing. I'm going to bring up um, like an example: the Harry Potter books. If you were to read a Harry Potter book and watch the movie, while a lot of stuff from the book is omitted in the movie, it still does a pretty good job in not just telling the story that it's trying to tell, but adding its own unique flavor to it to make it feel unique. And I a could... Go ahead. A better example, actually, the Hunger Games movies. I haven't the, seen those, so... The books are told in the first person, but because of the way that the film format works, they use it to their advantage to actually flesh out the world of The Hunger Games. And it, they do a fantastic job at it. Concluding film still sucks much like the ending of the last book, but beyond that, everything else, in my opinion, was drastically improved upon. But that's what I'm saying. When done right, you can make a good adaptation. When done wrong, you've got Persona 5, the animation... You've got Percy Jackson. You've got the Percy Jackson movie, which never got a sequel. You've mm -hmm. got most video game fucking movies. <laughs> yep. And... Please don't be. Please be good, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we're trying to say. This is a terrible. This was a terrible episode for fans and casual watchers. And as the ending of Persona Five: The Animation. Holy shit, I wouldn't be pissed that I I'm I can if people say this is a terrible anime, I honestly can't blame them. I can't blame them either. Yeah. This is like but you know what? We will save that for a final episode of the Wolf Podcast of Persona 5 the animation where we give our final thoughts on the animation itself. Oh, we're actually gonna do that, sweet. <clears throat> Yeah, we're well, gonna we do are a, doing that. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna do a final thoughts episode, but after this one. So, with that said, what do you think I, about? Well, go ahead. Well well, 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 I bet there, I bet there is one question. Of, uh, I bet people will have for us uh, regarding the podcast. That is. 
Well, what about the DVD episodes? We'll swing around to those when we can, but they're not out right now, so... Yeah. Give us time. Plus, we want to try to move on to some new things after we're done with Persona 5. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's going to be a while till we get to those. <laughs> yeah, so if anything, we'll be moving on to other things. Once they actually come out and we can actually see them in dub or sub, whatever they decide, um, we'll... Ca- or, 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 or fan translated. Yeah, we'll round up, we'll double back around and do them since we are interested. I'm especially interested in the Valentine's Day one. Yes. All right. Yep. So, anyways, with that said, what do you think about our thoughts on Persona on the final OVA and episode of Persona Five D Animation? Found a comparison we didn't talk about? Disagree with us in any kind of way? Go ahead and leave your comments down below, and we'll discuss it in the comment section. Like I said, the next time we'll see ya, we'll give our final thoughts on Persona Five D Animation. So yeah, that's gonna be a fun one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For for both the right and wrong reasons. I have a legitimate question. Sure. Hey Dean, would you rather yeah. rewatch the anime or replay Devil May Cry two? <laughs> oh. <sighs> <laughs> I think that says it all. Uh... <laughs> You're making... okay. Okay, I had to reason with this a little bit because, on the one hand. Devil May Cry 2 is shorter. On the other hand, Persona 5, the anime, is at least tolerable at sections. (laughs) (laughs) Don't don't worry, Dina. Persona animation, you can watch uh, up to the first 26. Don't have to watch the OVAs. Oh, man. It's still 13 hours of content. It's still 13 hours. It's still plenty. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) But... (laughs) Well, 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 at least you can't on a good note. (laughs) Anyways, we will, you know what, we will get the answer to this gripping question in the finale of Persona 5 The Animation Podcast, whatever. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, till next time, guys, I'm Keena47, a.k.a. Wolfkeen, along with... I am Dean Mikami, slash DM.3000, a.k.a. the person who's stupid enough to play through Devil May Cry 2. <laughs> <sighs> um, what? Oh... Oh, who are you? <laughs> Shut up. Be quiet. I love you all. <laughs> this is Florin J, and I am so exhausted by Persona 5 at this point. And and, and I've been Mario Fanboy 15, and, I, and I'm going to use the bathroom after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the best way to end this. Anyways, especially since Ryuji always talks about going to the bathroom. Good lord. Anyways, <sighs> till next time, guys. Take care.